Pokemon Red and Green versions began development in 1989 and they were considered complete and fit for release in 1995. It took a long time because of the problems surfacing along the way. These were considered, at the time, to be due to the game being on the cutting edge of new technology because the programmers were overcoming bugs that no one had needed to work around before. In 1992 to 1993, when the first playable sections of the game were completed in alpha form, is what started the long struggle. HM moves didn't exist at this point. Instead, the player had to use items to get around. For example, the surfboard item allowed the player to surf across the water. This item was still in the programming when the beta version was released, and some more hardcore gamers managed to hack into the game again. Instead of cut, the player would use the item axe on trees. Instead of flash, you would use candle. The escape rope was supposed to be replaced by dig, but for some reason, that item wasn't removed. It made perfect sense and seemed to work just fine. Until one of the alpha version testers used the candle inside of a building. The screen fogged up. The smoke screen attack animation covered everything. A text box appeared saying, Hurry, get away. The door sound played. The character would then be returned to the overworld. The building would be blackened and you could no longer enter it. The axe item worked perfectly for removing small trees. It also worked perfectly on people and some sections of the fences that hemmed in the entire playable world. Upon using the axe on a human NPC, the sprite would vanish and be replaced by a small patch of dark pixels. This looked most like the blood it was meant to represent in the red version and slightly odd in green. It became a morbid joke among the testers who all assumed these things were programmed in just to try and spook them and that they would be removed from the final versions. They were. Mostly. Escape rope was considered a step too far by some. Upon the player standing and facing a doorway, if you were to select the escape rope, it would form a noose and the player character would be hung. The only way to get out of this was to switch the game off and continue from the last save. One of the testers left and a new employee was hired in his place. The new guy did not appreciate the sick jokes that the programmers played on the testers. The others simply laughed it off and told him not to be so touchy. He insisted, however, that these were children's games and that the programmers shouldn't be adding these things, even if they were temporary and meant as a joke. That was so long ago, I've forgotten his name. Kenta or something. He complained to the higher-ups about the added extras. The programmers were questioned and one was even 
fired over the incident. The claim was that they were wasting time and resources. To be fair, by this time, we had music and basic sound effects in the game, which made these extra effects even more gruesome. Using the axe on a person would now trigger a high-pitched, squealing sound, along with the disappearance in the puddle of blood. Burning buildings also had an added repetitive crackling sound effect that was obviously meant to imitate fire to the best of the Game Boy's ability. Lastly, if the escape rope was used, a singular crack would play. None of the programmers ever actually owned up to putting these dark extras in. They all claimed to have never seen them before. But they began to suspect each other when they realised their jobs were on the line. Who knows if that programmer that was fired actually had anything to do with it. It was decided that the items would be scrapped entirely and HM moves were invented to enable the player to progress instead. The remaining programmers found that it was a lot of trouble attempting to erase the items from the code and they resorted to burying them to render them unusable or inaccessible. The effect was the same as erasing them, right? It worked and the whole incident was forgotten. That is, until the beta versions were released to the public. Hackers started taking an interest in the game's code. There were the famous incidents surrounding Lavender Town and the music that so badly affected people. But there were one or two cases in which the hackers had uncovered these buried items in the game's code and the disturbing images that came with them, combined with the overall music, caused them to completely lose themselves. Almost no records of what happened exist, but I remember hearing on the news back then that a high school student had taken an axe to her classmates. She's pulverized them as brutally as possible, turning them into indistinguishable puddles of human flesh. Her surviving friend said that she had become obsessed with her new Pokemon game in the time leading up to the attack. One of them, in an interview for a TV news bulletin, described her as a maniac for Pokemon. She was always excited about secrets in the game. The axe-wielding girl, of course, was hospitalized. She never spoke a word to anyone. But the nurses that took care of her claimed to hear her hum a tune at night. They said it was creepy and unsettling and made them feel uncomfortable. The girl is in her thirties by now, hopefully still somewhere secure. An older fan of the games had his office building burned down just months after that incident with the girl and the axe. It was played off by the media as nothing more than a tragic accident. After all, fire is quite a common risk in old, multi-story buildings full of paperwork. The strange thing about it, though, was that the only survivor was the man. Apparently, he had left the building preemptively 
blocking all the doors as he went. All the police managed to find was that the fire had started in a stationary cupboard. The only evidence being a pool of melted wax among the charred shells and debris. He claimed that the tragedy shocked and horrified him, and that he had nothing to do with it. He was still under suspicion, and the police found several boxes of candles and a few hacked copies of Pokemon Red and Green in his apartment. I don't remember if he was convicted for arson after that. I just remember a news bulletin on TV showing a burned game cartridge in the man's home. There were more incidents, all hushed up and forgotten with time. But with the modern world's computer technology, game ROMs and so on, there is a real risk that someone might be able to uncover those items again. Unless, in the newer versions, the old alpha coding was successfully removed. But nobody would have been looking for it in order to do so, would they? The thought terrifies me. I don't think I can handle seeing those things happen again. Knowing that I was a part of it. That someone might eventually find me and question me. The music plays in my ears every day. That tiny pulse of lavender town. Although I've survived for this long, I feel it is time to end the struggle. I'm writing this now as a warning to anyone who may read it. Don't go looking for buried items. My escape rope is waiting.